Thank you everybody for coming in person and online. Please excuse us, we are experiencing some uh, technical difficulties with our camera in the room, but I hope that you're able to see me through my laptop and uh, um, we'll have the, um, the room video fix so you can see all of our um, guests who have joined us in person as well. So my name is Lili Hunzumana and I am one of the uh, BSC Baha'i International Community representatives to the UN here at the New York office. And it's a pleasure to see um, new faces to the youth series, but as well as those who have been following us since April. It's really good to see you here. Uh, before I share with you some opening remarks, I just want to share some housekeeping items for us to keep in mind. We are recording the meeting today, and we hope to have some kind of video output to share at the end so that those who are not able to make it can um, learn from us and the, the insights that were generated here today, but also for yourselves if you would like to refer to the, to the recording later on. And do let us know if, especially for those who are joining us on Zoom, if you experience any kind of uh, technical difficulties, we'll try to um, resolve them here. And we also have a chat. Everybody has access to the chat if you're either in person or joining on Zoom. So feel free to let us know um, who you are, your name, and which city you're joining from. It's always nice to know where parts of the world people are joining from uh, when they come to these meetings. And when we get to the portion of the meeting where we have discussion, if you could please um, use the raise hand function uh, in the Zoom. And then in person, um, I'll just note the names down and I'll try to um, uh, make sure that I catch everybody. But if I miss you, you can just flag me down and uh, <laughs> I'm sure to, get, to, to make sure that you are able to share your questions and your remarks and uh, insights as we go along. So just uh, as a background for, for this series, these series um, started around the time when we had the Ecosoc Youth Forum, and they're going to end uh, during HLPF. Actually, the last event of the youth series will be our side event for HLPF. Now, the modality of that, uh, what that will look like, we're still waiting to hear, but we will share, of course, with you um, so that you can join us for the last one, which will focus on um, SDG 17, which is a collaboration for the goals. Um, so as you know, the theme for this year's HLPF is building back better from COVID-19 while advancing the full implementation of the 2030 agenda. So to think about this and to advance, um, what does it mean to build back better? How does it affect the SDGs that are under review this year? With the uh, major group for children and, and youth, we came together and we were thinking like, how can we create a space for young people to be thinking about the SDGs and to think about what the contributions are being made by for youth uh, by youth in these uh, multilateral spaces and to put together some kind of uh, document that really captures these insights and that will be of service to UN agencies, to um, missions here at the UN, also to members of civil society so that there's a space that's being created for, for young people um, but that's intergenerational in nature. So the nature of the questions that we have been asking are looking at um, how far we have come in terms of ensuring that young people are being included in, in decision-making processes because there has been progress that has been made. But we also, we also know that there are gaps that are still existing. So what are those gaps? And we have been trying to identify them. And then creating a space such as this that's open, that's welcoming, so that um, we can ensure that we, we are thinking ahead um, and we are taking a, a process-oriented a posture towards all these various fora that are happening. Um, we have the HLPF that's around the corner. We have the Transforming um, Education Summit that's in September, the Summit of the Future, which is next year, 2023, and of course, the World Social Summit 2025. So all these big meetings are happening. So we want to see like how, how are young people contributing to these processes and how do we ensure that we are eliminating the very real barriers that stand in, in, that stand, um, in the way of participation. So today we'll be focusing on education. Um, often when we think about the education discourse in multilateral spaces, I have found anyway that it's been um, really looking at uh, effective curricula and pedagogy. And, and of course, these are indispensable matters to discuss. Um, however, when we think about the purpose of education, uh, which is to train capable members of society and not just producers and consumers of, of widgets and, and products, um, we must also think about the fundamental paradigms that underpin educational systems. And we also need to think about the role of education, um, the nature of the learning, uh, the learning process, and of course, the station of the teacher who teaches the students in the classroom. So then we must ask ourselves, how do international fora that I have just mentioned help us to reflect on the fundamental purpose of education? 
That is, are there spaces being created to think about how education can fulfill its true purpose, to enable individuals to discover, and the true purpose is to enable uh, individuals to discover and, and, and develop their, their, their interests and, and capacities, and to enable um, society to benefit from these capacities. So then we can begin to see um, these four assignments in terms of process and to develop a more comprehensive understanding of the role of education. And we can also see that there's a role for the community enhancing educational processes and can create spaces where we explore that possibility. So as we consider these questions, um, conversations around um, our common agenda report is also in, in our minds, of course, as um, we had uh, this event also in our office this morning thinking about our common agenda. Um, so we can think about these um, big four that are coming up, the Transforming Education, as I mentioned, some of the future of the World Social Summit. Um, and we can ensure that we give thought to educational processes conducive to um, global governance structures that meet the challenges of today. So for an effective governance structures um, to, to appear out of these processes, this depends on individuals with the abilities to consult, um, to cooperate, to achieve true consensus, and to act in solidarity with one another. Um, and these, these, these um, summits also depend on those who can foster understanding between individuals. And also between, uh, it also depends on uh, promoting the well-being of communities, uh, societies, and humanity. So these are skills that must be gained from an adequate educational process. We can think about how do we make these appear in our, in our societies and in our communities. So with that, I don't want to take up too much space. Um, I will give um, a a space for our first speaker, um, Ms. Sarah Ahmadi, who is um, the program officer at UNICEF. And her bio will be shared um, in the chat as, as Sarah gives her remarks. Over to you, Sarah. 